Okay, okay. so welcome everybody to once again another one of our conversational corners um, for our virtual career summit at HBC this year. And I'm really excited because every interview just gets better and better and the quality of what we are actually spending time talking to our guests on has been really phenomenal. And so this morning, once again, I bring somebody really exciting into your space who is going to be sharing with you. And I would like to introduce to you this morning, Taryn Haynes Smart, who is has been involved in the developing um, the development and learning industry for about 20 years. And um, I don't want to steal Taryn's thunder. I'm going to actually ask her to introduce herself and tell you a little bit about how she has landed in the space and, um, and her own personal career journey, because I think that there is, once again, something that you are going to be able to learn from here. So, Taryn, welcome. Thank you for your time. Thank you for giving um, and sharing your, your interests as well as your story, as well as your journey in your career with our students. And then specifically around the area of tertiary education. I really am excited and I think that when the students hear about what you're going to share with us, they're going to see that there is nothing that limits them from going forward. So if you don't mind, would you like to just tell us a little bit about what you do, how you got here, and um, and what the future is holding for us in this incredible tertiary space going forward? Thanks very much. Awesome, great. Thank you, Lise, for the opportunity to connect with you and then also your 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 learners and to where they're at on their journey. Um, an exciting space um, to in, in the idea of well, where to next in, in life. So a brief introduction who Taryn is. Um, yeah, so you know, um it's uh, I, I'll be honest, I can can barely remember my um matric uh, life. <laughs> it was that long ago. <laughs> Um, but but yes, so, so I had, had having left matric, I had gone into go, gone to study straight away. I went, to, um, I chose to study through through UNISA, but then also with the the support of a varsity college setup, and um, to do my bachelor of commerce, um, and which and which, so then after that, I then kind of went into the world of work with a with a BCom degree, and absolutely faced what I think every graduate goes through in the in in the world of work when they arrive um, and now start to say, okay, I'm ready to start working. And they get the, well, you're overqualified for this role, um, or they get the, you've got the right qualifications, but you don't have the experience. Um, and so needless to say, I ended up um, start, starting out, not necessarily in what I'd studied at all, but it was my it was my opportunity to, to get in, in the door um, and started out as a receptionist in a footwear uh, company, it probably helped that I lose, <laughs> you know. So, but from there, it it was a case of take every opportunity, and when it came my way, um, and to apply, and so, um, for opportunities, um, and and roles that were better suited and more aligned with where I wanted to go. Wow. What I did learn along that journey is that the picture of who I thought I was going to be at that point in time, um, while connected to who I am today and what I do today was it not the exact picture. Mm -hmm. So the encouragement um, right up front is to say, you know, is the journey with at first step in the journey doesn't necessarily show you where you go, the direction you're going to end up ultimately. And it doesn't mean that if you're taking a bit of a, something that looks a bit different and it, 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 but it gives you that opportunity, you never know what you can learn from it and, the, mm -hmm. and where you can go with it. So embrace it and, and enjoy it um, and just keep going. And um, any, so, Fortunately, through that approach, I was then able to move into more of a HR learning um, space and environment uh, over over time and in my job roles. And along that journey, started to just absolutely fall in love with more of a corporate education space. And this idea that um, at school we with we've, we've got a set curriculum that we've got to work through, depending on our subject choices, depending on what we're choosing to do. And depending largely on the decisions we are making at the point of what we know um about a future that is always uncertain yes. um, and then you get into the world of work and you find out what you know um, you may if you've done tertiary studies you've got some more curriculum to guide you but in the world of work you quickly realize it's not enough yeah. um, but you've got to keep learning and you've got to that it's a continuous learning journey if you're going to stay on top of what you need to stay on top of 
So I consider myself absolutely wholeheartedly a continuous learner and a great advocate for it. Um, and my, my career history to date has, has shown that too, because those are the roles and the environments I've ended up in, and both from a private education uh, perspective um, in through both in your further education um, colleges, as well as through corporate uh, learning institutions. Uh, today, um, organization-wise, I've been with a company called LRMG uh, for 10 years. Um, and in my current space uh, within the division called VITS Digital Campus, which is a partnership with, with VITS University, where we take their short courses and provide them online to the market. Um, my role today, uh, again, to start differently to where, where I joined, uh, joined that team, more in a uh, program management client interfacing role, Today, I'm head of product development. So I have the opportunity to absolutely guide and shape the journey of the new courses that we um, develop for the market um, on that side of it. Um, for me, it is so exciting because it's, it's, where the, uh, it's where we get to hear what the market is asking for. And by market, I mean the individuals that are sitting in corporate spaces. We're talking about the leaders in corporates themselves that are saying, These, this is what we need our people to learn to do. Um, and particularly exciting at the time we find ourselves in right now, yes. where a, a traditional skills, um, they're not invalid, but we need to maybe relook at how we apply some of those skills um, or how we utilize them. Mm -hmm. You know, there's also the, the, the knowledge of um, the fourth industrial revolution and the robots and the machines and all of that, um, that there's this, uh, this view or that, that they're gonna take over our, our life and our roles and our livelihoods. And I'm sure um, your, your, your learners particularly have seen loads of um, material over in recent years that have encouraged them to think a little bit broader than the traditional um, uh, occupational roles um, and look outside of, of that. Mm -hmm. And there's loads of research that talk about how the roles that, live, that are alive today from an occupational role perspective are not going to be um, in, in corporates 10, 15 years down the line yes. uh, because they can be replaced, they can be automized. But that does not mean, as people, we don't have a place in the working world. If anything, we have a, an important, um, even more important place and role in the world because people still need people yes. um, and computers do what people do. Mm -hmm. um, and so opportunity for us all is not to think this machine's going to take over my job, um, but rather to think, how do I work differently so that the, the stuff that the machine can do, I don't need to do, but I get to do some of more of the strategic creative things um, that make us unique as human beings. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yes, and I think that really is also the opportunity that uh, faces a tertiary education today mm -hmm. um, with the digital landscape. You know, I think the, the reality of where we are today with COVID is. Um, uh, COVID-19 is not the reason we need a digital learning solution. Um, the the digit requirement for a digital learning solution has been there for a number of years. Yes. What COVID-19 did was accelerate it. Yeah. And it put it on the table more quickly to yeah. say, you know what, right now we need to do something differently um, because if we continue to work the way we are, uh, it, it's not sustainable um, yeah. from that perspective. Yeah. Um, and so, so that so that was the opportunity that we're sitting and facing um, right now. Mm -hmm. That and to the accessibility uh, that we're sitting in homes in a lockdown scenario of, of uh, currently. Um, while yes, things are are, lighten, are, are are opening up at economy level, schools are starting to go back. Um, but there's always there for this is going to be with us for for still. A lengthy period of time yes. and if it's not this, it'll be something else mm. um you know, so yes so it's about being able to be adaptive um, and adjust as quickly as possible mm. um but not allow it to limit our ability to learn mm. and grow mm. um and do something different yeah. uh, and and to to still take hold of our of, the, of our future you know and i think just at an importance of it we we would see from an economy perspective those businesses that were able to pivot or were either already had an online model or were able to pivot quickly into an online model, especially in the essential services environment, 
were, you know, came out of or went through this lockdown in a far better position than those that weren't able to make that pivot yeah. um, quickly. Yeah. Um, and while they're and they're certainly not um, unaffected there, but they were in a better position. Yeah. So I think that that's the the thing that we you you allude to it saying that COVID has forced us into this. It's accelerated the process a lot quicker. Um, and yes. that is going to open a lot of opportunity from a career perspective for young adults um, who are now starting to think very differently. They are starting to say, well, if digital is the space that I'm needing to be looking at and I need to pursue that, what are those options really going to be for me as an individual? And let's talk about the tertiary kind of space first, because that's the idea of this morning's discussion, is to really look at how this landscape is changing and accessibility to further education or further tertiary education is becoming more and more viable. In your opinion, do you think that universities are now going to start being more um, open to bringing things onto a digital platform where degrees can be offered from a digital perspective where young adults far and wide, not limited to, you know, having to come to a university where the building is, but rather be sitting in the comfort of their home, still get the support that they need academically, and then be able to really grow and develop themselves from a tertiary perspective. Do you think that that is what universities are going to have to start facing more and more now, based on where we're finding ourselves? Absolutely. You know, I think the the um, the the reality for universities at a at a tertiary um, level is, you know, there, there's there's a lot of things they need to address. So. While along this journey has been challenging um, uh, for for the institutions to make that 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 shift, um, and you know it's it, it there there are challenges around accessibility um, at an online level. There are challenges we know in our country around data um, and the costs associated to that, and having people having the right devices, yes. um, and so it's it's not as simple as turning uh, shutting the doors one day and turning on a system the next day yeah. um so it's a journey that has to be taken here um for for everybody both at a at a learner or individual a student level as well as the institution level right. um to start differently and so the opportunity here is yes there's been a short term um disaster management approach that that the tertiary uh, institutions have had to adopt in this time to say salvage some kind of academic year for those that um, were had started out looking forward to their, their university or, or their college year right. and it was suddenly interrupted. Mm. Um, and for so the question is um, has that's been answered right now has been how do we how do we try and make the most of that today? Mm. But the question I'm asking um, is about how do we make it more sustainable in the long term? Yeah. Um, and you know, and with, whether it's a complete online um, solution in every instance, probably not. Yeah. Um, you know, I think there are, you know, technology today um, with it makes a lot of things possible. Yes. Um, you know, and when you look at some of the simulation tools and things that are available, but those types of instrumentation and things like that at a far more complex, you know, so if we take taking medicine as an example yes. um you know, the the you might not um if we're looking at that sense of saying our environments might change that we won't the the access to a lab environment might be more difficult mm. um it's not something that we're going to have in everyday homes the yes. technology to simulate that mm. so there's going to have kind of a hybrid um model uh, that gets pulled in that does allow um, for access to the more um, restrictive technologies or the more expensive technologies mm -hmm. um, that if you know is not going to have access to um, but under under the right um, protocol uh, but at the same time there is a lot that can be done in what it's the model you know over the, the last few years been talked about the flipped classroom yes. you know where is instead of going in and sitting in a lecture hall um, where you're one of 50 to 100 faces um, and you're the, the, the role of the lecturer is there to deliver their piece 
they're learning their lesson for the day. There might be some interaction, but you know, in in um, a, in a lot of those scenarios, you some people you know can slide easily under the radar. They're there to sign, to sign the the register. They're present, but are they learning throughout it? Um, you know, and top it. What's going to have to shift and change is those things that can be learnt ahead of the classroom, through working through notes, through video um, uh, records, through whatever the um, resources are available to them, is still available to them to learn and then rather use those contact sessions, whether they be more virtually based or in smaller groups, um, more powerfully to contextualize the information. Yeah. So what does this mean to us today? Mm -hmm. um, how do I go and apply this into my space tomorrow mm. um, and use it more from that perspective? So, yes, absolutely a more online approach, but also a hybrid approach yeah. um, that, uh, that also helps address some of the anxiety um, around the uh, pure online uh, online learning space. Yeah. Because while tech brings us closer, is it doesn't enable me to reach out and put my hand on your shoulder of a struggling learner. Yeah, yeah. You know, so so yes, or just, mm -hmm. and, you know, even may sometimes make that eye contact. Mm -hmm. It's different when it's on the screen. Um, and so, so yes, um, I think, but I think it also, it's going to, it's, it is requiring a lot more effort from both learner and lecturer at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. Um, because while the lecturer might not be delivering hours and hours of lectures in a day, what they are spending hours and hours a day doing is thinking about how do I do what I do differently? Yeah. I only know the way, well, this is how I know how to teach it, but now I've got to do that differently. Mm -hmm. and, and as for the learner, you know, who's mm -hmm. the student that's sitting in the lecture hall with their friends and ch exchanging notes and, you know, kind of being able to pick the brains of another um, of their friend sitting in the in the cafeteria after the lecture and mm. saying, "Oh, what did you get that?" and swapping notes, you know. So that's got to still happen, just in a different way. Yeah, I think that also highlights then that there's this whole different set of skills that are going to be required from everybody. It's yes. not just the lecturer or it's not just the student. It's um, I think the world is evolving, um, and the world of work is evolving from a skills perspective. So when we're looking at the specific skills and tools that our young adults are going to need, what do you think, from your perspective, would be beneficial for young adults to really be developing and honing at a, at a, at a school level that will help them to actually bridge into the tertiary space and then obviously further on into the world of work? What do you think those skills could potentially be going forward now? So I think it probably my list probably changes on a daily basis at the moment. <laughs> <It does. laughs> um, but you know, I think at the top of my, some a couple of them that I can that jump out for me um, is first of all an agility um, in in the way we think and the way we approach um, uh, the, what we do uh, yes. because we you know is we don't know what's gonna what's gonna hit us tomorrow mm -hmm. um, and so. We've got to really cultivate what Carol Dweck calls the growth mindset, um, as opposed to a fixed mindset, um, and and always be ready to question what we know today and say, and the approach we would take is this still relevant and is this still valuable? Mm -hmm. So there's an ability and a willingness to say, I can step out of this because, and I can respond and do what needs to be done to to achieve the ultimate um, goal and end point, mm -hmm. and is a, a creativity requirement um, that you know has over the years has really started to 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 escalate in its in its benefits and its demand in organizations for people to not just be creative when I you know in terms of what they do from a you know we're not just talking being arty yes. um, but thinking creatively so um, thinking about these are the resources that I have at my disposal how am I how am I going to use them in the most optimal way um, to achieve what I need to achieve? Okay. Um, how do I take what we did yesterday and make it better? So there's creativity, there's also this idea of continuous improvement mm -hmm. um, and the ability to look at something critically. Um, and a lot of sometimes that takes means taking the ego 
out of something, you know, especially if it's something we've created, um, designed, put put forward. It's our body of work. We spent hours, blood, sweat, and tears on it. Mm. Um, it's looks at it, and you know that um, the, the 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 typical red pen. <laughs> you get the red pen response, you know, which you feel like you're back at school, where all of your errors have been circled in red pen. Um, yes. scenario. But the ability to look at those red pen moments um, and see them as the as as feedback, um, and some feedback's not always easy to take. So that's a critical of itself. Mm. Is how do I take feedback well, mm. and how do I give feedback well, mm. um, especially in a digital sense. Mm. And so that for me is you can wrap it up um, in a. In a an overarching requirement of of being human mm. you know I, i've heard so many engagements and interactions during this time um of people sharing little stories about positive responses they've got either from clients or colleagues family members because they stopped in their moment to remember to be human yeah and when we do computer screen and um, particularly if we don't have the video on because mm. a lot in a lot of calls that I'm on, they're just voice calls. And mm -hmm. um, we don't, you're not looking at the person either. But in that sense, it's easy to forget there's a person on the other side. Yeah. And um, in a in a state of I need to get this done, um, it needs to work this way. Yeah, we can things or deliver something in a way that just absolutely um, isolates the person on the other side or yeah. destroys the person on the other side. Yeah. And you're not going know that until too late down the line mm -hmm. um when you're suddenly not in, they're not engaging with you at all so so yes that humanism element or humanity element don't forget your your humanity and within that it's about the vulnerability you know i think we 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 grow up a lot of the times almost um with this 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 belief that uh you know if, if, by all means feel, you know what feel what you need to feel but don't show it yeah you know in recent years i've seen such such a shift of that in the corporate space um you know brene brown um a, a, a thought leader in, in that whole space has really spearheaded that that movement and initiative um around being vulnerable you know and um at a leader level you know and it's probably the most the place for it to happen um you know you feel that you you've got a whole you've got to be standing and um and show the and show the way and give people a solid um a vision and mission to believe in but you don't know what tomorrow is going to look like mm. and so it is between yes being positive being confident and um, being visionary um in your approach but also being vulnerable and also mm. saying hey we don't know what tomorrow looks like but we can get through it together yeah and um, I think there's a, a, a um, there's a movie I love that uh, Hidden Figures, and one of one of the lines in the movie that just always jumps out at me um, when the, the the characters are two kind of more senior characters in in this particular team, and he turns the 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 the, the main leader turns around to his two IC, um, and says to him, "Your job is to find the genius in the room. Yes. It's not to be genius in the room." Mm -hmm. And I mean, we NASA individuals, so these guys are all mathematicians and extremely bright to start mm -hmm. off with. Mm -hmm. um, but just that op that ability to look and see and look for a collective genius um, and know that we don't have to know all the answers. Mm -hmm. um, so we got to look, but if we can look for them and so that, and it comes back to what the earlier conversation around what, are, where, how, where can we work with technology? Um, and but be but to be who we are, and so it's about being the the glue in this this entire process. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, so that so those would for me be kind of really critical um, skills. And I guess the um, the one that I I continue to learn today, and I'm, I see it as a bit of a struggle also in my young daughter, is is be teachable. Mm -hmm. You know, so we often get ourselves into a space where or it's easy to get into a space that we think, well, I know this, I've got this. Um, but it's at that that point, it's also a risk that we become unteachable. Mm. And when we're teachable, we're not, we're not going to grow. 
um, and we're not see things differently. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, it's just stay teachable. It doesn't yeah. mean that situation and scenario, and it doesn't mean that you don't know what you might still have the better way. But just by being able to hear and listen, it can just give you a different lens mm -hmm. um, on the situation. It's actually interesting that you bring that up because one of the things that um, is often spoken about in the corporate space when you're talking about employing young adults, and I, I myself have had to experience that when I was out back in in the you know in in the industry, was um, that first of all our youth is unteachable, which I really struggle to understand because I've seen how amazingly they can collaborate. They do it very very well. <laughs> Um, but it's also this ability to collaborate and understand other people's perspectives and viewpoints. And I think in the world that we live in, we, we often forget that not everybody's story is the same. And so we think that they have to behave and respond in the same way that we do, when in actual fact, just the skill of listening to understand yeah. makes it a lot better. And that brings a unique vulnerability yeah. into a space that allows you to actually really stand out amongst the rest of your peers if you are able to utilize yeah. that skill very effectively. And I think that's where yes. our young adults are really starting to come into their own. They, they mm -hmm. I, I personally, this generation that I'm busy teaching at the moment, are very deeply concerned about injustices in this country, in this country mm -hmm. and in this world. It's not just South in Africa, world. Yes. it's worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, and so they are able to actually really understand. It's just that I think there's a lot of mentoring that needs to go in how to approach it, because I think we do tend yes. to allow the emotions to get in the way. So in saying all of that, obviously, mm -hmm. we're looking at this landscape of where the universities play a fundamental role in, in equipping our young adults from, a, from an educational perspective and from a curriculum perspective to go into the world. Mm. But the, the bigger challenge is, and, and I know that you um, are, have the same viewpoint with me with regard to this in our chats that we've had before, is that unemployment still is very high in this country. Okay, accessibility to education is very, very limited. And we know that there's big issues in these spaces. But what could we as individuals, as well as the, the collective um, stakeholder group, do better to help our young adults to overcome the risk of not finding a job once they've got that degree, because we know that that actually is a reality here. Yeah. Yeah. But also then the the ability to really just adapt well into the working world with the experience that's required. Do you think that there's something that we as stakeholders, school, tertiary, and and corporate, you know, SA, can work together in to actually make this a little bit, this transition a little bit better for our young adults? Yeah, I think, Elise, you said the magic word um, a little bit beforehand, and that for me is mentorship. You know, and, um, you know, mentorship for me is something that is, um, it, it it's it's multifaceted and it's not only where it's a more senior experienced person mentoring um a junior mm -hmm. you know mental happens peer to peer it happens um child to parents um it happens friend to friend um and, and you know across, across the board you know and so that's that really where you know i think for 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 this idea of young adults that are coming um, going out of an environment where in their, their, their lives in the world have, have essentially been structured and been told, this is what you need to do and when you need to do it. Mm. Um, when out of that, they, it's, it's, and I, you know, if I, if I think back to my own experience, um, and I've seen this in other, um, uh, I guess, you know, other, other individuals as well, that, you know, is there, there's almost two two uh, opportunities or two two pathways that happen. The one is, okay, well, you're out of school now. Um, you're an adult. Go make your own decisions. And they get thrown into this world of choice and uncertainty and, uh, and um, uh, um, I can't think of the right word now, but they suddenly have access to a whole lot of things, accessibility that they never had before. Mm. Um, and, and nobody's restricting them. You know, so and and but the expectation is well, you you the adult make the right decisions from, um and and yes, uh, but 
I, I know for myself, I, I mean, even today, I make some decisions, but I sit back and I think, what was I thinking? Mm. <laughs> today i may i get to that point a whole lot quicker yeah <laughs> and I, you know gosh that was really silly um and and you know and I, and i and i've learned um I, to to how to get out of some of those those um uh, to rethink some of those decisions before it has massive impact and um, the other route or pathway is almost that um people go into into a world where they, they have the opportunity or the structure and, and support along the journey and mm. um, that says to the adult it's your decision but I'm here to support you on that journey mm. um, and you know I, you don't have to make those decisions in isolation um, and yes parents play that role but sometimes um, parents aren't always the best positioned people to play that role because they're the parents you know they can provide a guidance um on the input um but sometimes you 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 need a, almost a third party um to be able to do that and that is where the the broader stakeholder opportunity can 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 play a role yes um and, you know there there are um and there there are a number of um uh, programs that, that run um, I know that you know both and that, that that between trying to connect corporates and and um, and schools. You know, I, I know a few of them that that operate in the Western Cape, but the, I think their focus tends to be more on mentoring the principals and the teachers. Yes. You know, and and so rather than mentoring the school leader, the the young adult that's now stepping out of the environment into a totally different environment. Um, you know, and, and so I think there's an expectation on young adults to just know what to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and I mean, I just, I, I, I had a, um, it just, it just in him moving to level three, my little epiphany moment was I, I popped into a, um, down to a local shop, which is now open to pick up um, uh, some musical supplies for my daughter for her lesson um, and arrived and, you know, and it's still new and we're trying to work, you know, everyone's trying to work it all out. But the store themselves, there's no direction. There's no one standing at the door to say, yes, you can come in. No, you can't. Um, you know, so just wait or what have you. So you kind of get stuck in this this um, state of inertia. Do I walk into the store? Yeah. Do I, wait? you know, and, and so you kind of, you don't, you know, and so there's this queue forming. You think, should I be queuing or shouldn't we be queuing? And, you know, and so my comment to them was just have some, you know, is, is, if you want to avoid frustration, instead of having to apologize now to every single person to say, oh, sorry for the wait, let's just have some kind of indication or direction mm -hmm. that says, this is how we're dealing with this. Yes. Uh, you know, and so, and, and it's particularly tougher in smaller stores that aren't your larger retail, that don't have a broader um, set, a staff count that are also trying to limit the amount of people at a staff level they have in their store. Um, but yeah, but the, it goes, there's a, a lot to say, just give some guidance, yeah. you know, and so that in an informal mentorship format, it can be in a, um, just come alongside your community, you know, for business people, community, yeah. um, you know, often, you know, if you, if you have capacity and, and time to, to the guys that are, as they're wrapping up, or even in this stage, mm -hmm. say, Hey, I'm here for a chat. Yeah. And I, just, at any point in time, let's schedule, you know, it, what does it take? Um, you know, a couple of hours of, of one's time um, a week to just take nurture and take, take a young, a youngster, you know, a young adult under your wing to just mm -hmm. say, what are you, mm -hmm. you know, um, and if you don't have any questions, then awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm here to connect what happened, you know, but just, it's about that lens. So, so yeah, yeah. You know, um, there are more formal opportunities, absolutely, where we can do uh, help with more job readiness programs and processes coming out of universities. So within the university space itself, yeah. you know, maybe at a curriculum level, mm -hmm. what needs to be brought into that to prepare learners better. Yeah. Um, but so the broader community that does has that's less formal. Yeah. It is more just formal. You know, that's about somebody in your circle or your connection that you admire for whatever happened to achieve in business and mm. um, a cup of coffee say mm. hey you know can difficult at this time granted <laughs> you yeah. know but then kind of the do it online it's 
Um, I, I'll be honest, there's for the, the people in business that I know today, I can't think of any single one of them that would turn down an in from a young adult yeah. to say, will you spend, can I, can I pick your brain for an hour? Yeah. Um, just, just to help me navigate this challenge. Yeah. Um, you know, wh where I need to go to, what I should be thinking about. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would encourage absolutely every single one of you, your young adults to think about their direct community. Um, and who can they go to? Local business people mm -hmm. and say, you know, it, this is this is a big decision I'm about to make. Um, you know, and get as much input as they can. Yeah. You know, and don't well, I can't do this right now as a no. It just means I can't do it right now. Yeah. You know, and flexible about when um and, and fit into there to, to to when they can give you that time. Yeah. And and thank them. Yeah. <laughs> and get people, you know, and that's that's a big one. Yeah. You know, if you've picked your brain about something, they've given you an idea. At, you know, and, and so you got a really awesome result out of it. Something unexpected happened. Well, maybe you didn't get the result you expected. So give them feedback. Yeah. Say, hey, took the on board, but it didn't work out so good. Yeah. Um, or this happened. It was totally unexpected because they also learn from that. Yeah. Um, along the journey about how do I do it differently next time. Yeah. I also think that the universities in that way, um, I know Vits has got a support system for their, their students where they can actually go for guidance and help um, and, and get direction. And then you, you talk about this continuous learning and we learning in our space with interaction through human beings, but we also then have the opportunity to continue improving our skills from a hard skills perspective, which are the short courses and all of those kinds of things that yes. actually get offered. And that's exactly what you're doing in this space that you find yourself in. Yes. It's these short courses yes. that encourage. So you spoke about this continuous learning process. And I think yes. that we all have to, at some point, at, whether we at school, and I, I, I alluded to that in one of my other interviews where I was saying, I even am at my age, and I don't see myself as old, but I'm consistently looking for ways to improve my skill, to improve my yeah. abilities. And these yeah. short courses are opportunities where people can go around doing that and, and, and offering. And you you mentioned that you say um, that your space that you're working in leads into corporates um, and offering courses for the corporates on an online perspective would you say it would be beneficial for young adults before they kind of to continue doing additional short courses, even though they're studying um, a degree of some sort that could actually help them to leverage their their skill in a better way? Would that does that is, does that leave room for um, this continued learning process? You know, I mean, we don't have much time, but you know, in terms, I'm sure that's a whole mm. topic on its own, but. I think yeah, absolutely. I, what I think I'm actually wanting to say to you is, is, is it to the student's benefit to look for alternate, um, additional courses that they can do whilst they're at varsity and whilst they're busy trying to get this experience that they need for the world of work? So I think the the, the, the short courses, um, you know, where, where they differ from a, um, a, a, a full university program, is they are more um, occupationally relevant in the sense of okay. they're more focused mm -hmm. on a particular topic. Mm -hmm. um, so an example um, would be, you know, if you, you think about a Battle of Commerce and you do Accounting 101 in your yes. first year, kind of, you go, yes, you, you're going to go through the, the, the accounting principles, the debits, the credits, the double entry system and all of that kind of yes. thing. Um, and there's a curriculum you're going to follow, but you're getting the academic, the head knowledge of what what needs to happen. Right. And kind of thing. What you might find in that sense that what it's not teaching you is um, the, for example, um, what do I actually do with that that information that's in the balance sheet yes. um, at the end? And so a short course in that sense could then supplement and complement um, and provide a different lens on it. Um, you know, academic and credit, um, uh, in, 
integrity attached to it. You know, so my 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 only caution or caveat with that um, be or there's a, there there to, a couple to be fair is, is first of all just just double check the academic integrity of any institution that's offering anything. Right. If it's a short term program. Um, you know, because if it's not founded in um, in strong academic basis and pedagogy, then then you don't know what you're learning. Yes. Um, you know, um, element, and uh, you know, then then you may as well use Google as your friend, and and because you're going to get access to exactly the same stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's and it give you the same information and knowledge. And I'm not knocking that informal process of learning. I use it all the time. Yes. I need to know something. I need quickly um you know i don't always go to google as my friend i go to the other <laughs> trusted side <laughs> but um but yeah it's the uh, you know that's in the flow in the moment of learning absolutely and um, it's very useful and beneficial but it does it also doesn't replace the short course um all that you know so each each of them have their place yes. in the bigger picture right my other um, a caution for a full-time learner or a student in a university setting and scenario is just don't don't take on something else at a short course level that's going to put academic demands on you that's going to compromise your your full-time studies. Okay. So just make sure that whatever you're taking on, um, it, it's 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 going to prepare you, yes, but it's not going to add extra demand. Yeah. Um, on to, especially yeah. given our conversation earlier about. There is a lot of work required and more work being required as we adjust in this new world. Yes. Um, so then choose it in your downtime rather. So where right. where you're when you're studying for for your exams, um, because that you want to be focused there and perform at your best at that level. Um, and and um, and don't let it now become a choice of well, I'm not going to attend that lecture because I need to do this one. Right. Um, so that just that would be the sensible choice of just choose what's going to complement and maybe give you something that you're not getting in your curriculum, but just don't overload yourself unnecessarily and stress yourself out. Um, because yeah, that's not, that's going to lead to burnout um, rather than give you a foot up. Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense because um, it's quite interesting. I'm starting to find that a lot of young adults are kind of trying to take on too much. So they've got this degree that they're busy studying for, but then they, because there's this pressure of having to have, to be different or to stand out amongst their peers, they keep piling on all these extra courses um, mm -hmm. and then get to the space where they're actually now stepping into the world of work. And suddenly, like you said in the beginning was, oh, sorry, but you don't have the experience or you're overqualified. Or, and, you know, that's heartbreaking when you know that you've been putting all those hours into it. Um, so would you then yeah. say it would make more sense as a young adult at Varsity to rather go and continue with the studies that you focused on, your degree, um, and then perhaps maybe look for opportunities where you can get some work experience? And what kind of work experience do you think would be beneficial for our young adults to actually approach that would help them to actually give them some leverage in the world of work? So, you know, I think is yes, the first part of that question is, would it be beneficial to, without a doubt, um, you know, the more that you can supplement at the working experience level and overcome the argument of you don't have the experience mm -hmm. um, is, is, a, is definitely a benefit. The question of what is, what's the best type of work experience you know, it's it that depends on your mindset. And um, to be fair, because <laughs> mm -hmm. you can take every single opportunity, every work experience that you might go in and do, and and take a learning or a lesson from it that you can apply in the world of work. Mm -hmm. So whether you are serving in waiting tables, um, packing shelves in a supermarket, where now suddenly you're learning about supply chain, demand, um, marketing, what's in my face. You know, use those opportunities to learn. Mm -hmm. So I'm packing up the stock, but hey, look what happens when people come and buy. Yeah. Um, and what happens? People get irritated when I'm in their way. Mm -hmm. So now I've taken a learning about customer service yeah. out of a typical supply chain job. So any work experience is valuable and relevant if you choose it to be. If you're not going to take it on board as a learning, as a working experience, then it's not going to provide any benefit for you. 
but the traditional mindsets, um, you know, that just says I can learn in any situation that I'm, that I'm working in. You know, if you're helping, um, if, you, if you've got somebody um, at, at, at home, a grandparent or something like that, 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 that lives at home and um, you help care for that person, even if you're not being paid for it, it's working experience. Yeah. All right. So look at it from that perspective. You know, if you, if, if you don't, uh, you know, look at your community. Where, you know, if, if you've got a heart and a passion for, um, for kids or for, for who, if somebody in your community and you put together a, a little project, mm -hmm. it's a project, mm -hmm. experience, mm -hmm. you know, so you can be doing what you love in your spare time with a working experience angle, mm -hmm. you know, and those are the people who get to write references for you mm -hmm. um, that bring into the world of work or into any university program or, or further studies or, or anything where they want to say, well, can you give us some references? Mm -hmm. Then yes, I can give you some references mm -hmm. because these are people who have seen me take initiative, who have seen me run with the project, who have seen me um, come up with an idea and execute on it. Mm -hmm. And those are, that ultimately doesn't matter what your field is, what your main job role is, yeah. that's what it's about. Absolutely. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Pursue the idea, execute on it, and then review it at the end of the day. What did I learn from it? And how will I do it differently? That, I mean, that's, that's work experience tied up in a nice little box with a bone for you. Well, I, I don't think I could have answered that question any better than you have. I mean, that was that is absolutely perfect. You talk about having this mindset of always being teachable. And so if you are, have got the mindset of I'm teachable in the situation, every opportunity is going to be a learning experience. And so how can I use that? And then what will it actually, how can I actually um, explain to people what I have actually achieved already? So, um, Taryn, yes. I do want to kind of bring the interview to a close, but I was wondering whether you could actually just kind of summarize what we've discussed this morning, more or less, um, in, in some tips that you would give to our young adults around how to apply to tertiary institutions. What is it that you think they would, would help them to actually really secure that position? Because that's also the next thing that they face is, you know, having to try and get yes. in place at varsity. What are some of the tips that you could actually offer our young adults? Well, I, I think for me, um, it's, it would be about also trying to, to look at um, what makes you unique. You know, because the, the reality is whether it's a university application or a job application, in most of these um, scenarios, they're getting thousands and thousands of these applications that they need to work through. Mm. So you've got a very short window to to really stand out um, within that, um, and you know, and uh, you know, short of you know, kind of um, absolutely coming doing the best that you can at at, a, at an academic at an academic level. Mm. Um, I mean, that would be the first tip: is apply yourself to your studies. <laughs> you know, don't, don't, uh, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't let it slide. You know, don't think, oh, I got this. Is take the time um, uh, to do it. You know, I mean, I'm, all, I, I, I'm reminded of my own sort of uh, studies, schooling, and I, you know, I was always a good, a good academic student, and I got on and did what I needed to do. Um, but the reality was probably in my university, there were a couple of things that I thought, oh, I don't, do, you know, do I really need to, you know, and didn't quite apply myself as much as I could have, mm -hmm. which I then did later courses, or I almost got myself into this mindset that, oh, I'm not a numbers person, yeah. you know. So I just did the bare minimum to get by because it wasn't my thing. And then I went on to do an MBA, which had finance, finances in, in um, probably half of the, the, the course, yeah. you know. <laughs> and But suddenly it made sense to me. And I'm thinking, well, why didn't it make sense to me back then? You know, and there's a whole lot of reasons um, attached to that. But, you know, the, the top tip is don't limit yourself. You know, so don't look at something and say, "Well, you know what? I'm not the I'm, I'm not I'm not the, the top academic student. I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm not going to get it." You are who you are. So just be confident mm -hmm. in who that is. Yeah. Um. You know, it's, it's there's a you know it's um it's not about going in and saying, uh, "I've arrived. You're gonna you have to take me because I'm amazing." But it's about going in and saying, "You know what? Who I am today is not anybody else in this room." Mm -hmm. Um. I'll bring something special and I'd like to share that mm -hmm. with this university, with this institution, with this workplace. And I'd like to bring who I am 
into that space and learn from you and create something bigger and different. Um, you know, so so yeah, there's it's about finding a way to stand out, um, but that's unique to you. Don't try and be anyone else, mm-hmm. um, because I'm going to be successful at that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm it's always I'm always I'm always amused that you know there's there's always a thousand um, samples or templates or of you know application letters and things like that. Um, but the reality is, if I'm copying somebody else's template, it's not my words. Yeah. So find find your voice. You know, is you know, and it's it's easy to 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 get intimidated. You know, especially if you're not the top um, academic, uh, that you can just know that your results are going to open the doors for you. Mm-hmm. So you know, that was that that was my story in life. You know, is I kind of I worked hard to get the results that I got, mm-hmm. and they they weren't. You know, they they certainly. You know, I was it was never the um the the ducks of the school or anything like that. You know, but I I had to work hard. To get those results, and to, and I got you know I was able to go to university with with my results, um you know and and further my studies and and also go on to graduate studies as well as doing short courses along the way, um but yeah but it was also because in my journey I've learned that I am unique mm-hmm. and that I have a way of looking at things that adds to whatever what everyone else has in the room, and that if I don't if I'm quiet. Then and I don't share that side. Yes, they'll go on and they'll do and they'll do well, but it could have been done maybe just a little bit different or a little bit better because I added my voice. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, and that's uh, and I'm I, I'd I'd love to say that that's going to open every door. And I'm also a realist and know that's not. Mm. Um, yeah, the, as I say, in in I guess for me, my my biggest life lesson and learning at a personal level, which I've also seen flow out at a work level, mm-hmm. is when you doubt when you doubt yourself and you you question your own value, you limit your contribution. Absolutely. Look for another voice. If all the, all the voices you're getting is um, oh no no you can't do this, but you know that you can, look for a different voice. Mm-hmm. Um, validate that. And maybe you just need to do it in a different way. Uh, but, but it's just that would be my top tip for life, not just for application. Is don't allow um, other people's view to limit your value and limit your worth. Wow. Okay, so I really we've run out of time. I mean, I think I could sit and talk to you all day because I just get so inspired. I, like I'm so excited that I've actually said let's do these interviews because. I think I'm getting more out of it at the moment, um, and I know my students. If I'm getting something out of it, my students are definitely going to take reams and reams of it, um, solid support away from what you just shared with us. I am very grateful for you giving up some of your time to just spend time with us at Heronbridge College. And Taryn, I really cannot thank you more than than I'm saying now. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure having you, um, just chatting to you. And I, I really am very grateful. And I know the students are going to be grateful for the time that you've given us. And so um, I just want to sign off by saying, guys, I will have um, Taryn's information around the short courses that are on offer um, up on the website for you guys so that you can um, have a look at those. Um, and perhaps maybe even share them with your parents where they might think that maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to actually look at an opportunity to do a short course or two because we all have to be in that learning space at the moment. Thank you very much, Taryn. God bless and all the best for the future. Thank you. And to all the best for your your young adults that are embarking on this next new exciting chapter of their life. Thank you. Thanks.